Greetings students and welcome back to another video on differential geometry. In this lesson we're going to develop the very important idea of reparametrization with respect to arc length. In other words we'll talk about arc length as a parameter. We'll start by supposing that gamma of t is a smooth regular curve on the interval i in Rn. By regular I mean that the derivative of gamma is non-zero over our specified interval i. What I'll first do is I'll write the definition of reparametrization that I had in the previous video for our easy reference. This definition states that a parametrized curve gamma bar with parameter t bar is a reparametrization of gamma of t if there is a smooth bijective or one-to-one -one map phi which converts t bar to t such that the inverse map phi inverse which converts t to t bar is also smooth and gamma bar can be expressed as gamma phi of t bar for all t bar in the open interval between alpha bar and beta bar. The reason we'll be using this definition of reparametrization is that when we ultimately change the parameter from t to arc length, we'll need to check if that change of parameter is actually valid. That is, is the reparametrization map from t to the arc length smooth, and is it bijective with a smooth inverse? If the answer to both of these questions is yes, then we will have shown ourselves that reparametrizing with respect to arc length is indeed a valid procedure. We'll begin this reparametrization process by recalling the definition of arc length. Remember from a previous video that the arc length s of a curve gamma, starting from the point gamma of t0, is the function s of t given by the integral from t0 to t of the magnitude of gamma dot as a function of u with respect to u. I'll call this equation 1. It should be fairly easy to tell from equation 1 that if t is greater than or equal to the starting point t0, then s is greater than or equal to 0, and is essentially equal to the arc length of gamma between t0 and t. On the other hand, if t is less than t0, then s is the negative of the arc length of gamma between t0 and t. Let's now take the derivative of equation 1. If we do that, we'll get the time derivative of the integral from t0 to t of the magnitude of gamma dot, which equals the magnitude of gamma dot by the fundamental theorem of calculus. I'll call this equation 2. Now let's go back to something we covered in the very first lecture about curves. We can rewrite gamma as consisting of the components gamma 1, gamma 2, all the way to gamma n. In that case, the magnitude of the derivative gamma dot, which is gamma 1 dot, gamma 2 dot, all the way to gamma n dot, the magnitude of this derivative is the following. Now this magnitude is always positive because as mentioned earlier, gamma is a regular curve that we're talking about. In addition, since gamma is also a smooth curve, the sum of the squares of these components gammas is always smooth. Finally, the square root of a smooth function is itself smooth if the square root function lies on the open interval between 0 and infinity. You can actually prove this to yourself by taking successive derivatives of a function like y equals square root of x. This function will be infinitely differentiable as long as we're looking between 0 and infinity. Now, since the term inside the square roots is a sum of squares, and since the magnitude of the derivative of gamma is always positive, we can conclude that the expression in our square root lies between 0 and infinity. Since the expression in our square root lies between 0 and infinity, the square root function overall is smooth. By virtue of the transitive property of equality, the function ds by dt must also be smooth. And if ds by dt is smooth, then s of t must therefore be smooth as a consequence. We've therefore satisfied the smooth condition for arc length to be considered a valuable reparametrization. All that's left is to satisfy the bijective condition. And to do this, we'll take the equation for ds by dt, or equation 2 as we called it, from earlier. Now notice that in this equation, the rate of change of arc length with respect to the original parameter t was the magnitude of the derivative of the curve gamma. And now also remember that gamma is a regular curve, its derivative is never zero. As a result, its magnitude, by virtue of being a magnitude, must always be positive. Recall that a magnitude can either be zero or positive, but since gamma dot is never zero, that only leaves positive as our option. So by equation two, this would then mean that ds by dt is also always positive. So if I draw on the graph the arc length s as a function of the original parameter t, it will always be increasing. 
we can see that s of t has a unique value of s for every value of t, and a unique value of t for every value of s. It is therefore bijective. Now the inverse function, s inverse, which is basically just t as a function of s, can be obtained by reflecting s of t about the 45 degree straight line. You can see that this inverse is also smooth since the original function s of t was smooth. Therefore, this second condition is also satisfied, making reparametrizing with respect to arc length a valid option. So I've shown that we're safely allowed to reparametrize with respect to arc length, but why is this important at all? The answer lies in this theorem, which states that if gamma of s is a unit speed curve, then the magnitude of the difference between the unit speed parameter values s1 and s2 is just the arc length. The proof of this theorem is quite trivial. Yeah, that sounds like something a lazy math professor or math textbook would say, but it's actually quite easy to prove. Since gamma of s is a unit speed curve, the magnitude of its derivative with respect to s is 1 by definition of the unit speed curve. Now, by definition of arc length, the arc length s from s1 to s2 of gamma is the magnitude of the first derivative integrated from s1 to s2. But since the magnitude of the first derivative is just 1, this integral comes out to s2 minus s1. And since this is the arc length we're talking about, which isn't allowed to be negative, we can just put in an absolute value in case s2 might be less than s1. Note that in this series of videos, I'm using a single bar for absolute value and a double bar for vector magnitude. So this completes the proof of this theorem. The difference between the parameters on a unit speed curve corresponds to the arc length. From this, it might make sense to say that if I have a unit speed curve, one way to ensure that a curve is unit speed is to have the parameter be the arc length. And this is why reparametrizing curves with respect to arc length is so important, because doing so is a good way of ensuring that you get a unit speed curve out of it. Of course, you can only do this reparametrization if your curve is regular. You wouldn't be able to ensure proper parametrization with respect to arc length if gamma wasn't regular. Now there's another important theorem we have to cover before calling it a lecture. This theorem is also pretty simple. It says that if gamma of s and gamma bar of s bar both represent unit speed parametrizations of the same curve gamma, then the parameter s and s bar are pretty much the same, except for some displacement constant c. To prove this theorem, we'll use the fact that there's a valid reparametrization relationship between s and s bar. If we differentiate the function gamma with respect to s, we'll get d gamma by ds bar times ds bar by ds by the chain rule. If we now take the magnitudes of both sides, here's what we'll end up with. And since both parametrizations with respect to s and s bar are unit speed, that just means the magnitude of ds bar by ds is 1. And as a result, ds bar by ds itself, once we take out the magnitude, can be either positive or negative 1. Since s bar and s are only scalars and not vectors, the magnitude in this case is just synonymous with the absolute value. When we integrate this equation, we find that s bar would just be plus or minus s plus an arbitrary constant c, and that completes the proof. Together, these two theorems we've proved tell us the value of reparametrizing with respect to arc length. If we reparametrize a regular curve with respect to arc length, we've basically got a unit speed curve after carrying out the reparametrization process, according to our first theorem. Then, according to our second theorem, any other unit speed curve reparametrization would then still involve the arc length as the parameter, but that arc length would just be displaced by some constant relative to the arc length in the original re in the original parametrization. Anyway, that should do it for this video. I'll thank the following patrons for supporting me at the $5 level or higher. If you enjoyed this lesson, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.